That was a letdown. Pretty unsatisfying. Not much of an ending. Eleven years. It's been eleven years since the premiere of Nickelodeon's TV series, Victorious. It had toys, it had video games, and it had a spin-off series. But the one thing Victorious never had was a finale. And to this day, it still bothers me. I've made analysis videos, I've made commentaries, heck, I've even made a Victorious cover album and released it on all major music platforms. I'm not saying I'm Victorious' number one fan, but I'm at least in the top two. So today, on the 11th birthday of one of my favorite TV shows of all time, I will valiantly, vehemently, and virtuously veer this visibly vile and vicious crime into a vision of vivacious victory. Friends, humans, thespians, let's finally put an end to Victorious. There's not enough people with originality, so here I am to save the day, Janiac. The members of the Victorious gang are all seniors in this finale. They're all about to graduate, but Hollywood Arts isn't your normal school. You see, there's this annual school tradition where the top seven final year students at Hollywood Arts are asked to participate in a performing arts talent show that'll be broadcasted across America in front of a live studio audience. The name of the show? Who wants to be Victorious? This is also the name of the episode, by the way. In the hallways, Hollywood Arts principal Helen Dubois openly chooses Tori Vega, Andre Harris, Jade West, Robbie Shapiro, Kat Valentine, Beck Oliver, and Ryder Daniels as the school's top seven students. Now, I know a lot of you are probably wondering why Ryder Daniels is on this list. After all, he manipulated female students' talents just so he could get good grades. But here's something you may not have noticed. Helen Dubois wasn't the principal when Ryder's manipulation was exposed. Sure, she would have had him re-audition and Helen back again, but as Tori and Andre demonstrate in their re-audition, people are allowed to perform with a partner. Ryder could have easily found someone to manipulate into sympathizing with him in order to pass the re-audition. Add this with Helen only seeing his history of good grades and boom, she'd probably think he's a star student. And hey, listen, if you hate this idea, don't worry, he doesn't stick around for long. After catching wind of Ryder's return, the whole gang is turned off by the idea. But Helen reassures them that the Who Wants to Be Victorious talent show consists of seven solo performances. Realizing the gang won't even have to interact with Ryder Daniels at all, they agree. Helen tells them to sign and initial what each of them will be doing for the show on the application forms provided. The gang walks away while comically dissing Ryder Daniels loud enough so everyone can hear. And theme song! The Victorious Gang and Ryder are now in Psychowitz's classroom to brainstorm what each of them should do for the show. Every time Ryder makes a suggestion, he's promptly shut down by the gang in some humorous way. If you want to make it even funnier, you can have him sit all the way on the opposite side of the classroom. Ultimately, the Victorious Gang decides on this. Remember these, because they're very important. Tori will perform a female vocal solo, Andre will improvise a song on the spot while playing piano, Beck will write and perform his own soliloquy, which is basically a monologue addressed to himself, sort of like speaking his thoughts out loud, Robbie will do a comedy act, Jade will reenact her favorite scene from The Scissoring, Kat will do a dance performance, and when Ryder chimes in to say what he'll do, Jade shouts, causing Ryder to start arguing with the gang loud enough for Psychowitz to come inside the room. Ryder says he doesn't want to be a part of the talent show anymore, but Psychowitz reminds him of the seven student requirement, and tells Ryder that if he doesn't participate, he's required to choose his replacement. Ryder looks at the Victorious gang with a mischievous grin on his face. The Victorious gang looks worried, knowing that Ryder's up to something. Ryder looks at Psychowitz and says, Oh, I know who can replace me. Smash cut to Trina Vega singing Chicago in the classroom while the Victorious gang and Psychowitz all cover their ears. We transition to Helen's office where Psychowitz and the Victorious gang, sans Trina, are begging her to switch Trina out for someone else because they know Trina wouldn't be able to do the song and dance number she signed up for. Helen explains that when a student picks a replacement for this talent show, the only person allowed to choose another replacement is the new current replacement. Everyone is disappointed, but Psychowitz comes up with an idea. He asks Helen if it'd be possible to speak with the actual producers in charge of the talent show to see if they'd be willing to lift that rule just this once. Helen gives them the studio address and Beck drives them there in his RV. 
On the way there, we could have some fun interactions with the characters and with items in Beck's RV, because why not? But most importantly, Jade throws a really cruel insult at Tori. Something along the lines of, while we're at it, could we replace Tori too? I'm starting to think horrible talent just runs in the Vega family. Something like that. Anyway, they arrive at the studio and something strange happens. The host of the event walks up to them and tells them they're just in time. Confusion runs across the gang's face and Tori asks what he means. The host asks if they got the letter they sent to Hollywood Arts. The gang's still confused. The host explains to them that this year, for the first time ever, the annual Who Wants to Be Victorious talent show will be shared between 14 students. Seven from their school, and seven from the other school. Psychowitz exclaims, what other school? Great Gandhi, is that? In walks seven female students and their female teacher. The whole Victorious gang looks with anger and simultaneously says, Northridge girls. No wonder they didn't get the letter. Then we could cut to commercial, like this. Fortunately, the gang doesn't forget the reason they came there, so they ask the host if there's any way to change the replacement student rule, to which the host responds with a big fat no. They ask for the producers, but guess what? He is the producer. The gang begins to complain, and the host promptly asks them to hand in their signed application for the show. Then, like, I don't know, Cat pulls it out of a bra or something? The host looks confused, but takes the application and walks away. And now, the tension in the room is thick. Hollywood Arts students faced off against Northridge students. Not a word is said, just very intense eye contact. The host returns and tells everyone he'll be announcing the students and their respective performances on TV tonight, so they can leave now. But before we transition, the Victorious gang leaves first, the Northridge gang sticks around for a bit. We transition, it's nighttime, and the whole Victorious gang, Cyan Psychowitz, is in Tori's house, sitting across the couch watching TV waiting to hear the public announcement for who wants to be victorious. The host comes on and there's a nice little music jingle and all that jazz. He holds up the paper and says, Tomorrow we'll be showing live performances from the top seven students at Hollywood Arts and the top seven students at Northridge. Starting with Hollywood Arts, we'll begin with an improvised song by... The gang leans in to listen attentively. And the host says, Tori Vega. The gang starts looking confused. The host continues, a soliloquy by Jade West, a solo dance performance by Robbie Shapiro, a comedy act by Andre Harris, a song and dance by Beck Oliver, a movie reenactment by Cat Valentine, and finally, the host takes a pause to flip the page he's reading off of. The gang looks at each other in fear, and Andre says, but wait, that means... The host continues, a female vocal solo by Trina Vega. The gang slowly looks at Trina in unison. Trina stands up from the couch, excited, while the rest of the gang starts to groan. So, as you may have guessed, those Northridge girls sabotaged the Hollywood Arts students' application forms, basically leading to every member of the Victorious gang either doing something completely out of their comfort zone, or just doing something that isn't their strongest talent. This is great for a finale because it could push each and every one of them to showing their untapped potential. But don't worry, it gets better. Let's continue. Tensions run high in the Vega household. Everyone is stressing out, except Trina. In fact, she's the only one that's being optimistic, seeing it as an opportunity to finally shine. It's at this moment that Tori stands up and rips into Trina. Tori lets all of her anger out by telling Trina she's talentless, obnoxious, and that she's the biggest mistake Hollywood Arts has ever made. Tears begin to well up in Trina's eyes, and she struggles to find words to say. Is... is that true? She mutters as she looks at the rest of the gang, who all give her the cold shoulder. She says that she'll practice as hard as she can, but Tori interrupts and says, Forget it, Trina. Trina storms off and goes upstairs to her room. Tori begins to feel regret, but she's too focused on the current situation to do anything about it. After trying to come up with ways out of doing each other's performance piece, the gang realizes their best bet is to just do it. They each try to help the other with their respective performance piece before leaving the Vega residence. We transition. It's 3.27am. Get it? Huh? Huh? Get it? And Tori hears a knock at the door. She opens it to find... Jade. Jade tells Tori that she left her scissors at the house while trying to teach Kat her part for reenacting the scissoring. 
Tori, who hasn't gotten any sleep yet, welcomes Jade inside. Jade searches everywhere to no avail. Where are they, Vega? Jade scoffs. But Tori has no idea. Ultimately, the two start arguing, and it's at this moment that Tori says, What is your deal, Jade? I've been at this school for years now, and you still treat me like I'm the worst person you've ever met. Every time we make up, every time I think we might finally be friends, you always go right back to hating me. And frankly, I don't think that's fair. Jade stares at Tori menacingly, but Tori holds her ground. Fair? Jade retorts. Fair? Tell me, Vega, what part of you is fair? You get into my school with just one performance, you kiss my boyfriend on your first day, and you never get in trouble for anything. Tori tries to interject, but Jade interrupts. Then you weasel your way into my friend group, and all of a sudden, everybody loves you. Let's all go to Tori's house, guys. Won't that be fun? And you want to know what the worst thing about you is, Vega? Tori rolls her eyes. The worst thing is, every time I make it clear how much I don't like you, you just keep butting in and trying so desperately to make me like you. What part of that is fair, Tori? What part of that is fair? The room goes silent before Jade finishes by saying, You know what? You can keep my scissors. You've already taken everything else from me. Jade leaves. Tori begins to reflect for a bit. And we cut the commercial. Yeah, check out the merch. <laughs> We come back and it's the day of the Who Wants to Be Victorious talent show. The whole Victorious gang and Psychowitz are standing outside the school's parking lot. Tori notices that neither Beck's RV or Psychowitz's van are there. She asks what's up and the gang explains that the Northridge girls sabotaged their rides so they wouldn't be able to get to the show. The gang's panicking, but then Kat has an idea. You guys, I know who could drive us. She starts texting on her phone. The gang ignores Kat and they start coming up with ideas all of which are futile, and just when all hope seems lost, a beaten up, rusty, grease-stained car pulls up, the doors open, and out of the driver's seat emerges, you guessed it, Cat Valentine's brother, who will be expertly played by Frankie Grande, Ariana Grande's brother in real life. Cat's brother says something crazy like, I took the feet out of my trunk so you guys could all fit, but there's not enough rope to keep you tied down there. The gang all look at each other, realizing that this is their only option. They get to the show just in time to get their acts ready. Psychowitz gives a really powerful speech about how proud he is of all the students, and they each give each other a look of confidence. Except Trina. And here's where there'd be actual performances. I'm not really going to describe them, but I'll give you the key moments. Also, just a reminder that the event is televised in front of a live studio audience. Tori finally writes a song on the spot all by herself, and the song is basically an apology to everyone she may have hurt or used throughout all of high school. Before Jade goes on stage, Tori tells her that she was secretly always trying to impress Jade, and that she's sorry she forced herself into Jade's life. Jade accepts her apology and goes on stage. Jade's soliloquy is about her mixed feelings towards her father, but at the end, she admits that even though he may not feel the same way, she will always love him. Before Robbie goes on stage to do his dance, the host announces his name out loud, and Kat's brother says, Wait, you're Robbie Shapiro? To which Robbie responds with, Yep, a Rooney. Kat's brother then tells Robbie that his sister always talks about him, heavily implying that Kat has feelings for Robbie. Excited, Robbie dances his heart out with a few callbacks to the time he was in dance class. Andre gets on stage for his comedy act, which is pretty much just Andre telling really funny stories about what happened to the Victorious gang throughout the show's run. Really nice way to do a brief recap. Beck finally gets to do a solo song and dance, and he chooses a love song he dedicates to Jade. Cat reenacts a scene from The Scissoring. I really couldn't think of anything to do with Cat. Anyway, the gang is all backstage now feeling nervous, because the next person is Trina. Now listen closely, because this is my second favorite scene, the first being the actual ending. Trina gets on stage. She looks out to the crowd in front of her. She's nervous, and everything is quiet. Trina closes her eyes and opens her mouth and begins to sing, Here I am, once again. That's right. Trina finally gets to sing, Make It Shine. Remember that in the first episode of Victorious, it was Trina that was supposed to sing the song, not Tori. And when Tori does sing the song on stage, she asks for it to be sped up. So for Trina's final performance on the show, she'd be given the opportunity to actually do her first performance on the show. Trina sings the slowed down version of Make It Shine that she practiced all the way back in the first episode. 
Trina sees that everyone enjoyed her performance, and she smiles, with tears coming down her face. Trina finally gets the applause she's wanted her whole life. She goes backstage to the rest of the Victorious gang, and they all hug her. Psychowitz says, Trina, we're sorry we didn't give you our approval. To which Trina responds with, I never needed it. We transition back to the school and the cast is at their graduation. Sinjin and Burf compiled a killer slideshow from all their years of creeping. The gang throw their graduation caps up and we stylishly transition to their lockers. The halls are empty. It's just Tori, Beck, Jade, Andre, Ravi, Kat, and Trina. Everyone finished emptying their lockers and they simultaneously close their doors and walk to the center of the hallway. They all trade looks, but no one wants to say anything. Tori chimes in, well, I guess, but again, no one has anything to say. Andre speaks up, we should probably leave before they turn off the lights, to which Kat responds with, can we at least play one more game? Tori smiles and says, apples are falling out of my butt. The gang looks confused, so Tori clarifies by saying, alphabetical improv, anyone? Andre smiles and responds with, but, Tori, this might be the last time we see each other. Robbie joins in with, Can we still be friends after this? Kat says, Different schools sure sounds like a big deal. Then Beck responds with, Even if we still hang out, it won't be the same. Jade grins and adds, Forgetting something? Tori still owes me a pair of scissors. Trina jumps in with, Great, so you can all come over and help us look for them. How about you let me keep them as something to remember you by? I think that's a great idea, Tori. We should all give each other something as a souvenir. Just be sure to keep in touch whenever we can. Kindly give me your phone numbers, emails, and social medias so we never lose touch. Luckily, we already have each other's phone numbers, emails, and social medias, Kat. My, my, how quickly the years went by. Not for me. I feel like I've been here forever. Of course you do, Trina. You're older than us. Perhaps she failed a grade? Quirky little Trina probably just wanted to stay with us for an extra year. Rex! What about Rex? What happened to Rex? Safe and sound in Robbie's backpack. This is it, huh? What happens next? Where do we go from here? Um, honestly guys, I'm scared. What will our lives be like when we leave? Victorious. No matter where we go, no matter how much we change, no matter who we become, we will always be victorious. Beck puts his arm around Jade, Kat takes Robbie's hand, and they all leave Hollywood Arts together, and the lights in the school turn off, but Tori's locker is still shining. Look, I know it's not perfect, but I thought it was pretty cool. Can you believe the show didn't get a proper finale? I Carly got a proper finale! You'd think with all these reboots coming out, they'd at least try to bring Victorious back for a proper ending. But no, so you know what? I did it myself. Be sure to follow me on Spotify, Instagram, but not Twitter. Forget Twitter. Instead, follow my podcast. If you're already subscribed to this channel, please subscribe to my backup channel, Janiac Tunier, in case anything bad happens to this one. And be sure to check out the merchandise. I love it! Now, this is the part where most people stop watching, so you know what? For those of you who stayed, I'm actually going to give you an Amazon card. Okay, this is me actually opening it for the first time. Alright, see? It's on camera. You can see? It's the first time I'm opening it. I would show you the receipt, but like my credit card and all that stuff's on there. So this is a $25 Amazon gift card that has not been used yet. I'm Canadian, so this will probably only work in Canada, but I still wanted to give back to you guys who actually wait till the end of the video. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here's the code. Yep, I'm not kidding. This is actually an Amazon card that you could totally use if you're the first person to type this in on your Amazon account. All right, if you're the winner, please let me know in the comments down below and tell me what you're going to spend it on. I've been talking about Victorious for like a whole year now, and you guys have been incredibly supportive. So as my final message to all of you, I just want to say, no matter where we go, no matter how much we change, and no matter who we become, we will always be Victorious.